The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 893 That wasn't so bad. Hi, Valet said, hovering above a group of students with a polite grin. Is there any chance you've seen a lilac filly with a stick and a big raincoat who looks way too serious and might have forgotten how to smile? The students looked at each other, scratching their heads. She's with you, right? A stallion asked. Explorers from the north? Valet nodded. Yeah, that one. I saw you two yesterday, Amir offered. Probably not recent enough? Mentally thanking them for their ability to stay focused and not be overwhelmed by her presence, Valet shook her head. Any time since this morning. Think she went off to wander, and I've got to tell her some stuff. Is it about the archives? Another mayor asked. I saw Dr. Lost an hour ago. He was calling all hooves on deck. Didn't seem to be too upset, though. Uh, she rubbed an ear. Almost makes you wonder if he set this up himself as a game. If someone rifled through my private things, I'd flip. Valet pursed her lips. Yep. Totally. She's probably off investigating too or something, and I got a hot new lead I gotta share with her. The students eyed her in interest. You do? The first stallion asked. Valet winked. Can't blow it and let the crook know we're onto them. Sorry, folks, but stay tuned for it to get interesting in a day or two. Another group of wandering students came over and joined the first. Hey, you're hanging out with Valet? One shoved another shoulder good-naturedly, giving Valet a slight frill that her name was becoming commonplace among strangers. She's looking for that kid that was with her, Amir told the newcomers. You know the one? You see her a few times and sort of know the face, but she clearly doesn't want the attention, so you focus on Valet or Gerard Guillaume instead? Heh, <laughs> Valet grinned. You guys are classy enough to pay attention to that. Thanks. She, um, uh, really doesn't enjoy it. But I am looking for her. Why wouldn't I pay attention? The mayor looked vaguely put out. I've seen you around. You love the popularity. Yeah, some of the students I've met have gotten a little carried away. Valet wobbled a hoof, emphasizing just a little. A newcomer with a deep voice raised a hoof. You're not looking for the lilac kid with the raincoat, are you? Valet's attention snapped to him. You've seen her? The stallion nodded. Saw her in the window of a coffee shop, looking glum as can be. Made me kind of worried about her, but what can you do, you know? When and where? Valet intently hovered closer. He looked over his shoulder. Fly that way, look for a plaza with a fountain one block to the east, and it has big windows. Can't miss it. Might have been half an hour ago, but she wasn't in a hurry. Valet did a mid-air backflip. Thanks, buddy. Tell your friends I said you're cool, and I owe you one. See ya! She sped away, leaving the crowd all smirking and a stallion with a starry-eyed grin on his face. She said I'm cool. Ha! Yes! The coffee shop wasn't hard to find at all. Valet saw no lilac fillies in the windows, so she started soaring in a broadening spiral out from the center and didn't take long to catch a trace of a black rain poncho trailing forlornly along the road. Hey! She flew in for a landing, hitting the ground with a roll just because she could. Starlight! Valet? Starlight blinked and looked up. Valet brushed herself off with her wings. Been investigating? I wasn't tired, Starlight replied. Someone had to. I haven't had much luck. Well, guess what? Valet put a wing around a tired-looking filly. I found our sneaky schnook. Crafty criminal, rude rustler, what have you. Everything's gonna be peachy. Thought I'd let you know. Starlight slumped heavily in relief. Really? Valet nodded, aware that ponies were watching. Here, hop on. Let's fly and talk. Soon they were airborne, flying in circles around the island as Valet laid out what Lavender had said and the plan for the following night. So, since we're gonna be up again after sundown, I figure I'll stay up a little longer, stretch my legs, and then go back and sleep the rest of the day away. You got any plans? Starlight was quiet. Valet rolled on her back, positioning Starlight on her chest so she could see the filly's face as she flew. You're less alright than last night. I figured this investigation stuff might get you down, but you still don't look good even though it's over. The guards are on our side, so is the professor, we've got an agreement with the culprit, the students like us, our names are as good as clear. I met Dr. Caballero, Starlight said. He recognized me. 
Vully blinked. From your hometown? I didn't ask a lot of questions, Starlight replied. He might think it's someone else, since he thinks I'm from the north, but I didn't react well, and he's suspicious. Vully exhaled. You don't want to find out what he knows? I'm afraid, Starlight said, downcast. But I need to know. But I don't want to find out by myself. I don't even know what he knows. Maybe he knows nothing I don't, or maybe he knows about things I didn't even know to be worried about. You, Vallee insisted, booping her to snap her out of it, are gonna get a look from Felicity whenever I don't owe her the world's best beauty sleep. Remember all the stuff we talked about last night? Starlight nodded. I went out and tried to help investigate and solve problems. I just ran into more than I was ready for. Vallee sucked her cheek. Okay, new addendum to everything I told you last night. Being a lonely hero is still pretty lonely. Thanks for doing it, but we were safe for a while. Could have waited for me to come with you. Starlight sighed. Sorry. I hope that apology is to yourself, Fully prodded. You're the one feeling bad. Hey, want to solve an easy problem with me? Starlight tilted her head. Someone told me there was a ship from Griffinstone in the bay this morning, Fully said. I've seen it as I've been flying around. Not our friends, unfortunately, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's our other friends with the soundstone. Whom I've never met. Wanna go see what they want? Greedy griffins are exactly the kind of thing we can wipe the floor with if things get out of huff, and I need some exercise. Okay, Stolid volunteered, putting on a braver face. I never met Gunfer either, though. Well, let's hope it's him, Valet grinned. He might have had his fun with Birdo, but we'll see what he's got against the Dream's big guns. The Griffin ship wasn't quite a frigate, but it was hardly humble either. With two masts, it matched a dream in length, but was significantly fatter, and as Valet and Starlight flew closer, a Griffin was visible snoozing in the rigging. How much you want to bet they're all in town, Valet whispered, gliding to a stop on the marina. The ship was moored at the university docks on the northeastern edge, as opposed to the commercial ones at the southwest tip, and a huge crowd of students filled the beach, waters, and walkways to the south. That was where the island's population spent their weekends, apparently, but a sizable crowd had gathered around the Griffin ship as well, including a few harbor officials who were doing duty as guards. Look! It's Valet! someone called, and the crowd's attention turned. Hey dudes! Valet waved, starlight perched on her back like a hooded crow, Trying to hide, yet doing a terrible job of not calling attention to herself. What's going on over here? Several ponies talked over themselves at once, each blinking and trying again. Avalé uh, grinned and rolled her eyes at the chaos. Let me guess, there's a boat? One of the official-looking ponies pushed her way over, wearing a tight, pocket-covered uniform shirt that Valet decided would look incredibly hot if she fell off the dock and got wet. Valet, right, she said. The captain of this ship has been asking to speak with someone from your party. Are you familiar with a gunfer of Griffinstone? Valet clicked her teeth. Heard of, never met. And he's holed up inside? Bananas, he doesn't know what he's missing out on. The official mayor completely missed the subtext. We don't see Griffinstone Griffin's voyage to Kinmari often, but he said you're welcome aboard. She nodded to Stolik as well. Well, let's see what he's got. The ponies gave Valet space to take off, but she didn't even need her wings to nail the jump to the deck and felt like showing off. Hey! She flicked her tail upon landing looking for griffins. Anyone home? Where's your boss? A napping griffin who was exactly the same color as the pile of rope, sails, and supplies she was napping on raised an eyebrow. Are you his problem or something? In there. Valet whistled, heading to knock on the door. Friendly bunch, aren't you? The door opened, and a younger, dark griffin in a black suit regarded her, his crest looking like it had been deliberately slicked two directions at once. For a moment, his eyes pierced hers. I don't know you. It was a greeting, and Valet returned it. Welcome to the club, buddy. Some hottie down there was saying the captain was looking for ponies from up north. You the captain? Heh, <laughs> Gunfer gave an approving grin. I like you. You have the look of someone who knows just what to do when something's taken more seriously than it deserves. He offered a talon. Gunfer, who's the kid? 
A friend, Valet shrugged, bumping the talon and watching for danger, though her cutie mark was dim. So, what's up? Gumford's grin turned to a frown. You able to get something to Gerardo? Should be, Valet nodded. He's on a weekend camping trip with some students or something, so not today, though. Gunfer reached into his suit and withdrew Valet's old flash club, modified to power a soundstone instead. Here, he said, offering it to her. I like to limit my debts, and it wasn't feasible to return it near the border. We're even now. Valet took it and blinked. Uh, wow, thanks. The other soundstone was with Shine Spark on the Dream, come to think of it, so with this one with her? Mm, anything else? Not unless you have a penchant for chit-chat, Gunfer shrugged. No charge. You look like you can buy whatever you want through fame alone, and that's not something that interests me. Valet tilted her head, not sure how to read this griffin. Ah, you wouldn't happen to know how far away the ship with my friends is, would you? Gunfer shrugged. We passed the tugboat going to get them a while ago. Hard to make the fastest time when your crew doesn't know the meaning of ethic, so I wouldn't use our speed as a comparison. But they'll be here eventually. Do you want me to let Birdo know you're asking after him or something? Valet asked. You could, Gunfer shrugged again. Don't take it as a promise, but I might hang around for a few days. Not a lot of other pressing obligations in the world. Valet glanced at the ship deck. Yeah, your crew here looks really eager to hit the high seas. Gunfer chuckled. <laughs> they already know I'm not paying for the return voyage. If they want to see their home again, they're going to have to seal this thing for free. There hasn't been much enthusiasm. His eyes shifted, but Griffinstone is a dump, so it's hard to blame them. I'm in the market for a new hobby myself. You look like you've been enjoying yourself. What does this island have to offer? The league glanced back at the door. What, Kinmari? Hordes of attractive, adoring fans who require you to have a literal goddess's royal garden hoof to get any sleep. And coffee shops, which I just learned an hour ago. I'm gonna try one of those. Gunfer snorted. Well, I'll let you two go about your way. And pay me a visit if anything interesting happens. You won't be interrupting anything important. I'll tell Birdo. Valet flipped the flash club, caught it, turned to leave, and blinked. Oh, by the way... How are you in a fight? Or for strength and speed in general? Gunfer frowned. Do you have to? It's a sore subject. Good enough to care? Valet nodded. Maybe you should go play sports with the locals. They'd probably dig it. I don't know. Anyway, see ya. See ya. Valet took off, building altitude rapidly. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? She asked, flipping the club again. No, Starley decided, taking a deep breath. It wasn't. Feeling any better? Valet gently pressed. A little, Starlight admitted. Thank you. Heh, <laughs> Valet lazily spiraled. You feeling like going back to bed? You were up almost as much as I was last night, and way curlier to boot. Starlight nodded. Maybe. I'm still thinking about Dr. Caballeron. You wanna go look for him together? Valet asked. If there's something that's this much on your mind, either you're gonna need to face it or find a real good distraction. Starlight bit her lip. I feel more like I need to prepare than be distracted. What kind of distraction? Valet blinked. Yeah, never mind, sorry. Got my mind on a certain distraction of my own right now. Uh, she dived, corkscrewed, held Starlight close and blazed over the recreational beach in an attention-grabbing trail of green, soaring past easily 200 students who were sunning, swimming, or playing games. A few shouts and cheers reached her as she pulled up, realizing with slight embarrassment that she probably should have warned Starlight before doing that. Yeah, she held Starlight with one hoof, hovering and rubbing her neck. I might be enjoying this too much, and you're way too young to have fun teasing these kids yourself. You all right? Starlight tilted her head. All right from what? Valet gave her a look. Crazy corkscrew dive, without warning? Didn't want to make you dizzy or give you vertigo. Oh, Starlight shrugged. My horn was much worse when I used to overuse it, and it lasted for days. I didn't even notice that. Valet blinked slowly. You know, dealing with the dizziness is the hardest
part of, part of stunt flying and doing flips and tricks and stuff, right? And like half my fighting style? I had to practice forever to be able to go my fastest without disorienting myself, and it's still the part that takes the most focus. I've been living with my horn for a long time too, Starlight replied. Bananas! Now I wish you could fly. Valet did a casual flip and started gliding into another dive. You'd probably be a natural. Heh, wouldn't that be fun to see? Maybe. Sometime later, Valet strolled with Starlight into the laughter dorm, her mane ridiculously windblown, and her beret perched perfectly on her head. Starlight looked the same. Hey, Ironflanks, Valet greeted, waving to where Maple sat with several students on a ring of couches, the lounge fuller than it had been in the afternoon, yet still guarded by watchful guards. Valet! Starlight? Maple looked up, breaking off a conversation. You look happy. Good news? Valet shrugged and set Starlight down. Yeah, we got some leads. I'll fill you in tonight. Also, got this back. She juggled a flash club. I need to crash, but you can give Sparky a call if you want. Kinda want to wait and see her first reaction to how I'm doing in person. <laughs> she grinned, setting it near Maple. Also, Starlight and I have been practicing stunt flying. Maple and the students all blinked. Aren't you a unicorn? One stallion asked. Starlight nodded. She's a unicorn with a cool raincoat, Valet corrected. And if she holds it and uses her magic just right... Starlight crystalled the corner of the poncho to one of her hoofs for emphasis. It makes a passable glider. Not a good one, but we could get a skydiving thing going on. It's good enough, Starlight mumbled. This is how I survived the first time I fell. And I've fallen from enough high places, it seems like a good idea, right? Maple's eyes shone with interest. I would love to see that sometime. Oh, we'll show you. Valet winked, heading for the room where she had slept. In the meantime... I'm tired. See you tonight. Be ready to stay up late. I gotta crash. Nobody followed her, and the guard by the door let her through, his companion guarding the professor's office. Valet slipped inside, sneaking quietly, and detected Felicity's slumbering form, once again buried beneath a luxurious mound of blankets. Hey, Valet whispered, fairly sure she was asleep. I know things kind of got interrupted last night, and I said I owed you one or two, and I kind of spent my day teasing hot mares and stuff, and might have teased myself a little too, so move over and let me share. End of chapter 893